Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Diary of a Double, the year-long journey of Antonio Aguelas from Mexico <clears throat> to swim from France to, I'm sorry, from England to France and then back to England, a total of 67 kilometers. And we also have a special guest uh, today also, Sally Minty Gravit, who at the age of 59 became the oldest person at the time, since broken by an Australian man, but she was 59 years old when she did a two-way crossing of the English Channel in 36 hours and 20, 26, 26, 26 minutes. minutes. Yes. So we're going to uh, discuss, and, and Antonio is going to discuss what he did uh, this week at Workout, and then we'll get into some question and answer and some, some comparisons. Welcome, Antonio. Muy buenos días, muy buenas tardes, buenas noches, wherever you are. It's a pleasure to be here with all my friends, especially my co-host, uh, Stephen Munatones. And I see also my great friend, Quinn, over there. Yeah. So, uh, Antonio, um, you, had a, you, had a hard, um, you had a hard week two weeks ago where you swam seven hours and 22 minutes on a training swim in a... Uh, famous river uh, outside of Mexico City. And um, what did you do this week? Well, Stephen, um, yes. It, uh, fortunately, on week 20, um, I did two important things. Number one, I rested, which uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, Rafa gave me this, uh, this week to rest. And basically what I was doing is I was walking two days, 10 kilometers. I went to the National University and then I would swim the third day, three kilometers. So um, I asked Rafa, well, what's gonna be the workout for the three kilometers? He said, whatever you want. So Rafa, it's always very strict with the amount of uh, paddles, pool boy, and, uh, and fins that I can use. So I did, uh, I did my, own, uh, my own special um, workouts, which was five 400s. And I started with nothing, pool boy, kicking, pool boy and paddles and then fins. And then I will go back five to hundreds, starting with fins and going all the way down. But the most important thing for this week, I have two things for this week. The first one is that I want to introduce um, something that I want to uh, share something that has happened to me since I started swimming uh, for this uh, double crossing. So um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is I want to explain what happened to me on the 31st of uh, um, December, which is going to be in my blog on Monday. But can I share the screen, um, yes, Stephen? See, I don't know if you guys remember when I did Ocean 7, um, I had a dream that uh, I needed to swim to a beach in, um, in, um, in, um, on the other side of uh, Donagadi. Um, because there was a treasure there. And this happens because I used to have a, a friend who was a pirate when I was a little kid and his name was Don Julian. And he sent me in my dreams um, a, a numbers that I finally found out that were the coordinates and the latitude for um, the longitude and the latitude to, to the beach. And I never got to the beach, as you remember, you know, I almost crashed my head into the, into the stones. So I never got the treasure. So when I started, training again, strange things happen. And the first thing that happened is, you see that green letter over there? I found that one day at the pool where I go and swim. And then I open it and it said, dear Antonio, um, wait for news. And I didn't know what was happening. I mean, this strange things happened to me. Um, so I just was waiting and uh, I'm swimming and something I see that something around is there. I can, I can barely see it. Um, and then look what happens. This parrot arrives and he has something in, in, in his mouth. And I didn't know what it was, uh, what um, the parrot had. And he delivered me something that's very precious. And he asked me if I was ready for a new adventure. And so he starts flying with me at Las Estacas and I didn't know what, what he was trying to do. And he tells me, finally, he talks to me 
And he says that he's Don Julian. And that is, he's here to go with me in my next swim. And um, so I asked Don Julian, but you were a pirate. Yeah, he said, well, I was killed by some English pirates. We won't take that against them, Sally. Um, you know, you know, you know, they, 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 they beat us, the Mexican pirates we were beaten by the, by, the, by the English pirates that usually happen in, in those days. But he reincarnated in a parrot. So now he's guiding me through this new adventure and he gives me half of the map. And I said, what is this? I said, well, this is half of the map that you will have to find the other half and you will find the clues to be able to go back and forth. Because if you achieve swimming from England to France and then coming back to France, you're gonna find the treasure. So I was very happy because he told me that the pirates, when they knew I was gonna come to, to, to Scotland, they had taken it away and, and buried it somewhere at Shakespeare Bay. So we start looking for it. And um, you know, we start searching for, for, for the other part of the map and look, somebody else arrives. And that's me when I was a little kid. So this is amazing. Now I have my old friend, the pirate, um, I'm, me as a little kid. I mean, it was just wonderful to see um, myself as you see, you know, I, I haven't changed that much. I still have uh, this round body. So I'm not, I'm not slim, I'm, I'm, you, know, you know, we long distance swimmers can, can put a little bit of fat around ourselves. And he tells me here, I am your, so, or, it says, hello, hola, yo soy el pirata Toño. And that is, hola, I'm the pirate Toño. And he gives me the other half of the map. So now we have the map. And as you see, you know, there are different clues that we have to be solving during our, our year long. And some of them have started to appear. Um, the first one is that I go to La Jolla. Remember we were in La Jolla when we saw those uh, seals, Stephen? And I was surprised to see this um, white seal. You know, I don't know if, uh, if you guys- Ahora. Have you been in, in La Jolla, but the, you know, the seals love to come uh, closer to the, to the, um, to the, uh, um, the cove. And there was this white one and I saw it one afternoon. And then when I started swimming the next morning, she was there and she comes and tells me that her name is Marina and that she'll be going along with, uh, with, uh, Tonio, Don Julian, and myself in a trip. So now we are all happy because we have them. And, uh, you know, we swam in La Jolla and, you know, we are ready to keep on rolling. And then last week when I was in, uh, in Las Estacas, look what happened. I got a dragon now too. His name is Ryu. And uh, so we prepared the whole team for the swim. And this is nice. Because now when you ask me if I am afraid of sharks, can somebody that is, uh, um, um, has th that kind of help be afraid of sharks? No way. I don't know if he's gonna be good with the jellyfishes, but I, I'm sure no, no shark is gonna get around Ryu. But now, this is how he came out. You know, Las Estacas is this river where you started. And so that's, that's when he came out of there. But something at the end of my swim happened. I heard some noises coming out of that cave. I was trying to listen. And I don't know what's gonna happen. So the next time I go to Las Estacas, I hope I will find it. So this is something that happened this week. I got the story so far, as you can see. And then on the 31st, I went and meditated and uh, some strange thing happened. Um, I, um, my sensei told me that uh, I had this new feel, new aura of, um, of peace. And um, as you remember, Stephen, I told you that when I was in, in La Jolla and the last time in Las Estacas, um, I was able to hold my, my, my mind in a more steady, um, in a more steady place. Instead of having these thoughts that some, sometimes they go away, uh, I was able to hold it better. And I think this is something that, uh, that uh, he finally explained me um, that I was able to 
move into another dimension. And so things are coming together, all these things that have happened with the with the, with this, with Mar Marina and Don Julian and Antonio and Ryu start are starting to make more sense. So this is what happened to me during this week, and I'm ready to start week 21, which uh, Rafa is probably going to start torturing me. So this is what I want to share with you guys. Got it. When you when you are in that zone, when you are focused mentally, do you swim better, faster, slower? Do you, do you know the relationship between your mental state and your swimming speed or power? Two things happen. I swim lighter with less stress and with more power. I can feel the power. Um, and this is something that's, that's really important for me because you know what happened with the double crossing in Catalina when I was going, when I was going back I had a big crisis that um, I was very stiff and very, my mind was just, we had, we had a problem with our, our changing our kayakers and I got all screwed up with the time. And um, that really, that really was difficult for me. So being in this state where I can uh, just focus and, uh, and narrow my, 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 my way, how do you say wavelength? Yeah. Um, in my mind uh, and just, just bring them down and just be calm and, and relax helps me a lot. Got it. And when you when you're in that state, when you you're feeling light and and you finish a hard workout, um, how's your recovery? Does that does that flow state continue once you're on dry land, or once you hit the hit the ground, does everything revert back to normal and you start thinking about work or food or whatever you're thinking about? I always think about food, Stephen. That that's that's irrelevant. Food and drinking, <laughs> food and drinks are not 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 part of the. <laughs> the, the, the feeling relaxed. No, no, no. That 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 doesn't. No, but work. You know, and and you know who who my biggest critic is Jimena, who uh, um now works for me now. That she's the CEO of uh, our consulting firm, and uh, she has mentioned that uh, I am more to I have more tolerance, um, and I don't bug people as much as I used to do. Um, but you know what is really interesting is at night, the combination of katsu which I, I, I use every day and this new state makes me sleep much better. Um, I don't wake up in the more in at night that many times. And if I wake up, I go back immediately to sleep, which is very, very, that's a big difference. Uh, and I am able to, if I wake up, I'm able to erase any thoughts. You know, you always have trouble during the day, you know, always have things that you were thinking about the next days. So that helps me just to narrow and go back to sleep and, and feel relaxed. Got it. And, and about this, this aspect of, of recovery, other than getting good sleep, uh, both before your swim and after your swim, are there any other tricks that you've picked up over the years of your channel swims and marathon swims, especially as you get older and older? Be very aware of my, my, um, my, my rest. I, I, I used to be very concerned about resting. You know, for example, this is the first time in many, many years that in between the season, I take a week off. Okay. And, uh, and Rafa, it's very conscious. You know, Ra Ra when Rafa sees me, he comes, you know, we, we train every day and sometimes he comes to the house at around five o'clock or uh, five o'clock in the morning. And if, I don't, if, I don't, if I'm not in a, in a good um, physical uh, state, he sends me back to sleep. We just okay. do some stretching exercise and he sends me back to sleep. That has changed a lot because before when I was just training with, um, with, uh, with a schedule and had my workout for the whole week, I would, I, my mantra was I would never miss a workout and I would do everything my coach said I, I needed to do. And with Rafa is, we'll see how you feel and don't be afraid of resting. And that has been a big change. Got it. Got it. When you, how does he judge that you need more sleep? Do you, by your looks, by the way you walk? By my, the way I walk, my look, and we all, we all, every day we do, we stretch. Okay. And when I'm very tight, he can see, he can, he will add that the question would ask me is, how are you feeling? I mean, you're not, you, you don't look right, you don't feel right. And we just do stretches and, uh, and maybe a light uh, bike. You know, this is something I got from from Sally when we, we were talking in uh, in uh, in uh, when we had the Woza Awards in San Francisco. I asked Sally, 
how she trained and she mentioned that she did some cross training and Rafa and I uh, put that into routine. I mean, we we're not afraid of doing some biking or to do some rollers or go into the uh, elliptic machine or even the, the uh, you know, the running in the band yeah. in the treadmill. Yeah, you and you and Sally are unique, but you're also representative of all the, the marathon swimmers and channel swimmers who, you know, you started swims uh, in your youth. I say youth, meaning in your 20s and 30s, and you've continued on. I want to ask Sally, um, you've done um, an English Channel Crossing at least once in the last five decades, and you're aiming for the sixth decade. How do you deal with recovery? Is recovery easier, better? Are you, are you handling it smarter as you get older and older? Yeah, I think I think I do smart training instead of um, uh, garbage yardage. Really, I think I overtrained on my first swim when I was eighteen. When I did my first channel swim at the age of eighteen, uh, forty six years ago, I couldn't move my arms for a week after. I then learnt to, as Antonio says, to rest more. And the older I've got you have to remember that we have a lot of muscle memory in our shoulders and I rely on that. And I am thankful that I can get in the water and I can swim myself stronger the more I swim. Um, and I'm very fortunate that when I do my channel swim in July, I probably, uh, the swimming pools are closed and have been closed since March here. So I have to rely on sea training. So. What I'm going to do is in this cold sea, I'm going to swim for a short time, but a hard swim in a short period of time, as often as I can when I've got somebody that can keep an eye on me, which will keep my muscle memory going, will keep me swim fit. I'm fit anyway. I do kettlebells and weight training at home. I do, I walk two or three hours a day with my dog. So I am cross training. I'm just about to start a little, um, a month long program with a guy to do online fitness with him and a little weekly challenge with him, which will keep my focus um, positive and keep me, I want to become a, you know, a lean, mean fighting machine again, um, because the last eight months has been very tricky and emotionally draining as some of you may or may not know. And um, I, I now need to focus on myself and look after myself. And I think, the recovery, when I did my two-way, I got out of the water and I could put my arms up in the air and I had no after effects apart from a little tendonitis in my wrist. I really didn't have any aches or pains or anything because I, during that whole two years in the build-up, well, three years in the build-up to that swim, I, I, I made myself do a little circuit every day at home of squats, um, core work, strength back strengthening work chests you know art press ups and tricep dips to get all my con my muscles conditioned for swimming i didn't do anything else i didn't overdo it i didn't overtrain and i think that's a very very important and at least one day's rest a week and if you don't feel like swimming don't swim and because you, your body will be tired as antonio will say um, and if you are tired, go back to sleep, you know, rest. And as we get older, we need more rest so that our swimming can become better. And I think that there's a danger of seriously overtraining. Um, and a lot of people think you have to train and train and train and train. And actually, if you train hard and rest well, the combination is if you can get the balance right, you'll carry on swimming and you'll be uninjured. And I think that was very important for me. Got it, got it. And since I have Antonio and, and Sally on, uh, on the line here, what, you're both, well, Sally, are you 60 yet? I'm 63. 63, well, so yeah. as a 63 year old and Antonio is a 61 year old, how do you, I mean, and you've been doing this for so many years, how do you keep so motivated to do it. I mean, obviously Antonio plays with, with dragons and, <laughs> and sea lions and pirates, but uh, yeah, I mean, really it's gotta go, it's gotta be deeper than that. 
Yeah. Maybe uh, Sally go first and then Antonio. Well, for me, I I spend a lot a lot of time in the winter, probably not swimming because I've done so much in the summer. So in the winter, I do different things. I'll walk, do the cliff paths. I'll do different stuff. Um, this year has been a bit different because we haven't been able to swim that much. So when we did swim in the sea, we carried on and I am still swimming in the sea now. Um, short periods of time when I can get a swim buddy and um, it's kind of shorter quality, more fun swims now than it was in the summer. And it will continue to do that as the weather, as the sea gets colder. But I... I take my hat off to Antonio for training so hard in the winter. Um, and I, I'm going to have a chat with Antonio later, but I think what we, we all have to be careful about overtraining now to prevent injury. And the stretching is fantastic. The walking you're doing is fantastic. And um, just be very careful not to overtrain because I have learned my lesson and I will never overtrain again. Um, I, I don't need to is for me that's my thing and i do it because i love being in the water and i just want to be in the sea and antonio well two, two things in my or three things in my case um as i as i mentioned before um i'm hyperactive so if i don't swim i would make lucia jimena and all my co-workers crazy i mean i i i you know i just go in and we'll be doing all the you know just as doing things and asking for things and so that, that keeps me very calm. Um, it's better than taking Prozac or, or any of those other drugs. Um, so that's, that's the first one. The second one is that in my family, uh, we had a very, um, you know, we have a gene of diabetics in both my families uh, and also um, high blood pressure. I, as a matter of fact, I have, I've had high, high blood pressure since about 12 years ago. But the third thing is that you know, you, you said jokingly about the dragons and, and the pirates, but, but, but being in the pool, being in the ocean, being able to tell the stories keeps me like a kid. So I don't have to be an adult, you know, I don't have to be a professional. When I'm in the water, when I'm in the pool, I play. And it's something that for me, it's very important to keep on playing because I think as you grow older, you forget to play. And I love playing. And um, the other day, somebody was very upset with me in the pool because you know the whole workout, I was just trying to get that moment when I was gonna go and just go ro real fast and over and and just go in front of um, of uh, of her. And we ended the workout and said, "Well, you're just like a, a kid, a teenager. Can you not behave?" I said, "No, I won't behave. I love doing that. I love to be on, in in your back and the last fifty just go all blast and pass you after a three thousand. That's that's fun." That's a lot of fun. I mean, I'm sure, you know, a lot of us have done that and it's, that's fun. That's swimming and that's what I enjoy. That's what I love. Wow, that's great. That's great. Well, we have a, a plenty of uh, people on the line here. If anybody has a specific question, either um, unmute yourself and ask uh, um, Antonio or Sal or anybody else that's on the line or uh, put it in the chat room. But um, Antonio, mm -hmm. as people are thinking of their questions, um, can you, I, I know what Stanford is, um, you know, the, the outstanding university in the West Coast near San Francisco, but what is the, your hat? What is that? Uh, my hat is something that I, that I started after I finished Ocean 7. And I started a foundation called Brazada Stroke Abrazada. So we, we, we try to hug people through swimming. And it's a foundation that teaches children in, uh, in uh, public schools to swim. And before the, the confinement, we had a thousand kids. And um, it's probably one of the most, when people ask me how I feel about all the things that I've done in, in swimming wise, what I say is that it has given me a voice. People will listen to me. And so I can go around and say, look, I mean, we're gonna have this program for public schools. And in Mexico, getting into public schools is very complicated. I mean. I don't, I'm not, I don't know how in the rest of the world it is, but in Mexico, you know, the public schools are very, they don't want any intruder from the outside, especially from the private sector. And, um, and I was able to do it. And, um, and, it's, uh, and it's, you can't believe the faces of the children the moment they swim. 
the moment they can hold their bodies on top of the water. And then the next step, because we have, we, we go to this Olympic pool that has a tower, you know, 10, five, and three and one. And you don't know how many kids after six months want to go all the way up the tower and jump from the tower. And the empowerment that they feel about being able to swim and be free in the water, it's amazing. And that's, that's something that, if, if you ask me something I really, really miss, is that we, are not, we haven't been able to do that. All pools are closed and, and public schools are closed in Mexico. So next, uh, next school year, I hope to, to get uh, going again. As a matter of fact, all the, all the proceeds, all the royalties of my book uh, in English and in Spanish go to the foundation. Okay. Okay. And how is the situation of, of COVID-19 in Mexico? What, what is really bad. Really bad. Um, we've been in confinement since uh, December, I think December 18 again, and uh, we won't be open until the 10th. Um, you know, as the rest of the world, we're having a lot of problems with the vaccination. Mm. There, are, you know, the whole process of getting people to be vaccinated. Um, we haven't been able to get as many uh, vaccines as uh, we need in, in some states, uh, for example, in the, in the metropolitan area of Mexico City, we're the same as LA, almost all beds are full. Um, no, it's really bad. Um, fortunately, I have a place where I can swim, but, uh, but, but yeah, it's bad. It's bad and I don't think it's gonna get any better soon. Got it, got it. So are you, how does that um, phenomena about, you know, pool closures, um, limited travel, how, is, how are you gonna work that into the rest of the seven months before you go over to England and attempt the two-way crossing? Well, I'm hoping that uh, they don't close uh, the cove. Um, I'm going at the end of the month, I'm going for a week to the cove. Okay. And the, and the previous week I'm going to Acapulco. Hopefully it won't be as, as warm as it was the last time. And then in February, I'm going up for a week to Los Cabos. And then I'm going again a week in La Jolla. And that's, that's in, in March, hopefully, in, you know, again to La Jolla. And this morning I had an idea, Stephen. Let me run it through you. Um, to, to make a Catalina swim in April. Uh, oh, yeah. The water temperature is going to be around 15, 16. Um, I'll be able to swim another month. I've swum Catalina in August, September, January, and I think July. So now I'll, I'll be able to do it in, in, in April. The only problem is I don't know if the Federation uh, will have, um, um, you know, will be open. I got, a, I got an email from, uh, from the Catalina Swimming Federation saying that they hope to open it again. But we'll have to I can I can help you with that, Antonio. Hi, everybody, and uh, Hi. thanks for doing this. Connie is my name. I'm based here in San Francisco, and uh, I'm going to swim Catalina as well. And I know a lot of people who do. And if you need help with the logistics or so, I'm happy to help you, Antonio. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'll uh, I'll keep you I'll keep, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Connie, if you could put your email in the chat room and then Antonio could, uh, yeah. could communicate with you. Yeah, of course. And Antonio, if you need uh, help with on your crew, I'm also happy to um, to be available. Oh, yeah. I, wish I, was, I wish I was closer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it, it's a beautiful swim. It, it is um, relatively warm, you know, here in Northern California. Right now we have about 50 degrees or so. In the summer, it goes up to 60, 63. But Catalina is around 64, um, I would say, even in, in April. So it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I did it. I did it in 2006. It's a lovely swim. So I put my email in the chat or yes. you have to help me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please feel free to, um, to contact me here, everybody. I'd like to help. Thank you, Thank you very much. And then we have another question. Oh, we have two questions uh, here. Uh, they're both in the chat room. And uh, one of them is from a winter swimmer. So uh, the exact opposite of Acapulco. Yeah. <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> uh, and and uh, there, uh, they're a little bit afraid of the amount of training needed to swim a long distance swim. And again, I think long distance is in the eye of the beholder. If I think about Antonio or Sally with their two-way crossings, long distance means over 60 kilometers. 
Okay. Uh, some people think, you know, long distance is only 30 kilometers and some people think long distance is 10 kilometers. But um, <laughs> my, my take on, on this is uh, how, do I, how do I start doing a long distance is the same way you start doing it for uh, a channel crossing. You just little by little, step by step, you know, yeah. you don't need to go from, you know, let's say uh, uh, 3000 meters in the pool suddenly to 10 K in the open water and then a, and a 20 K uh, workout. You do it uh, step by step, week by week, month by the month, you just build up just like you will build up uh, when you're swimming in cold water. You know, you start off in the summer and you keep on swimming through the fall and water temperature drops and uh, you keep on going. But Antonio or Sally, do you have any, any good advice? Yeah, it, depending on the swim that you want to do, um, you need to work backwards from there. So if you have a channel swim booked in, say, for instance, you have like if you have a channel swim booked in July 2022, for instance, which is 21 miles, you know that for that channel swim, you have to do a prerequisite six hour qualifying swim to be able to do that. So in the year coming up, you need to make sure that you're swimming regularly and maybe do at least one six hour swim this year to make sure you like it, first of all, first of all and you practice your feeding and you practice your everything that goes with all of that, the greasing up, you know, everything that goes and you build up slowly to that six hours. If you like that and you get on well with it, then you know that the following year you'll be able to do at least one, maybe two, six hour swims and maybe do a back to back what we call a back to back swim where you're doing your channel swim in a weekend so you maybe do a eight hours on a saturday and another seven or eight hours on the sunday back to back to get that muscular feeling in your shoulders so you feel comfortable going forward to aim for a potentially 15 to 20 hour swim which you don't know how long it's going to take so I don't, it's all relative. You have to work out what you're going to do and you have to work back. I said this, I think I said this to Antonio when I saw him in 2018. You know, when you've got your swim, you work backwards. And I had every intention of going to do a two-way Catalina before my two-way channel swim, but it just didn't work out. It, the timing, the, the traveling, it just didn't work out. So, um, and I was very happy with what, what happened to me. But, um, and what Antonio is doing is fantastic because you are there and you can do it and you've done that now. And so, you know, mentally you can go somewhere, turn around and come back. So you're mentally and physically prepared for that channel swim. You just have to stay fit, stay strong, stay uninjured and stay well and stay healthy for your channel swim in six or seven months time. But everybody is different and everybody will have a different starting point. You know, I've got 46 years of swimming here in my shoulders and in my head um, and no injuries over those years. So I, I'm doing something right, I think. Um, but everybody is different and everybody will train differently through the winter, through the summer. So I, I, I would just, you know, what you said at the beginning is always right. I mean, what said Stephen, you, you work your way. But one thing that you, an advice that you gave me, Sally, and it was very good uh, uh, for us uh, when we did the Catalina back and forth, is um, remember you told me you have to swim segments. So yes. we, went, we went to, to, in May of last year, we went to La Jolla and we swam for 24 hours in segments, wow. 24 hours. Yep. So my mind and my body, was was trained for to be alert for 24 hours um and that helped a lot when i did Catalina. Yes. and this is something that i had never done before breaking workouts it was always four six eight ten hours yes. straight it makes a big difference when you go 12 hours and you go in in segments of four or segments of three and then you rest in the middle and the other thing that's important when you do when you well for me has been important when you do cold swimming is getting in and out of the water yeah, because never you, <laughs> you you never get warm, and you have to go back, and you're cold, and so the coldness you keep you keep cold all day long, and um and that's that's what's going to happen when you're in the channel. I mean, yeah, and, and you get and you do you you get 
when you go in the water, you get cold, but you get to a point where you don't get any colder. And if you keep moving, you'll stay, you'll keep your body heat and your body temperature. You regulate it by keeping moving. It's when you that's, stop in the water that you get cold. That's a, that's a very good sentence. You get cold, but you never get colder. I mean, it's a that's point right. where you, you cannot get colder. I mean, and that's, you, you, you have to be able to reach that point. Yeah. Feel comfortable with that pain, and then you keep on going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There was a um, interview that I did, oh, uh, I would say six months ago with a Brazilian swimmer, Igor de Sousa from Bra uh, Brazil. And he did a very fast two-way crossing. Um, I think it was around 18, 18 hours and 50 minutes, somewhere is under 19 hours, I believe. But a year before, he decided to do everything in two. He decided to, if he would eat dinner, he would eat <laughs> half his dinner, take a less than 10 minute break and eat the rest of his dinner. If he, was, if he was going to the pool to train, he would uh, either ride his bike or take the car halfway there, stop 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, and then go there. Every single thing he did, brush his teeth, you name it, he did it in twos. So when he got to, he went from England to France and France to England. When he got to uh, France, he knew that he had a year's preparation of doing everything in two. And he was very confident brushing his teeth, uh, going to the pool, different sets. He would always, if he would go 10, 400s like you, Antonio, he'd do five rests, five minutes, and then do the other five. Very good. And there That's was another funny. man from Tunisia. He just wrote to me. He's done um, several swims over 24 hours and two swims around 48 hours. Um, I said, how do you handle the lack of sleep? And part of his training is uh, periodically, let's say once a week, or, uh, I'm sorry, once every two weeks or so, he doesn't sleep one night, but instead of staying up at night, he goes and he walks throughout the night. So on the day that he isn't working out, he'll do a regular work day, at night, when he's starting to get sleepy, he puts on a backpack and he just walks until sunrise. Yeah, funny. Very, very sleepy, but then he knows I'm going to be sleepy in my two day or 48 hour swims, et cetera. And then he goes a regular work day. So everybody's got these little tricks of the trade that well, they've developed over time. That's really interesting. And a lot of people have asked me, uh, how did you train to, to stay awake for that length of time? And you can't really, I don't think you can because your body gets into a routine and you have, it's total body confusion is what Mike Oram says, but you have to get your body used to doing things at different times, which is exactly what that man did, Igor did, or the Tunisian. I think that's a really good idea. And if I was, maybe Antonio, you should do that on one of your walking days. Um, every month, maybe do that. So you lack of sleep, don't have sleep for 24 hours. But you've done a 24 hour swim, so you know. So it's, I, um... I, so, something's happened, something different happens to me. I just get all wired. <laughs> I never, I know at three o'clock in the morning, it's going to hit me a little bit, but it hit me at three o'clock in the morning when I was partying as well. So I know the feeling. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> you know, three o'clock is three o'clock. Uh, and, uh, and that, that doesn't matter. You know, we have a question here from a friend of mine, Carlos, Carlos Alvarez. Carlos tried to, to do a double crossing of the English Channel um, this year. And he has, he has two questions in the, in, the, in the chat room. Number one is how do I combine technique and, and my, my swimming? And basically, Carlos, technique is part of my, my routine. I mean, I, did, I, I do it with uh, Ricardo Duron and with Rafa. Um, once a week, we spend uh, part of uh, an important part of the workout and it's additional to the rest of the swimming. And but, but probably the big difference for me has been doing um, weight, uh, um, strength exercise. That has been yeah. something that's very important. And that's something yes. that, uh, that has made a big difference from my earlier swims uh, 20 years ago to now. It will and prevent it, injury as well, which is really good. Yeah. And his second question is how, I, how, 
how can you handle the cold? How you prepare for the cold water? And this is something that, um, you know, that's how I met uh, Quinn. I used to go to San Francisco and, and, and swim in the bay. And the only way I can, I can think about being getting used, and you never get used to cold water. You, you acclimatate to cold water, but you're gonna, you're gonna feel the pain, you know, you're gonna feel it in your, in your, in your arms and your toes, and you have to be able to live with that. But you have to go and swim in cold water. And if you're doing a, a North Channel swim, La Jolla is not cold. La Jolla is very warm. You need to go to San Francisco. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and the big difference, the, the, the only thing different in San Francisco is that either you go to the Dolphin Club or you go to the Cirque. And the South End Rain Club, we really need to get how to get warm up. I mean, we, 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 we are allowed to bring tequila and scotch and beer to our, 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 our sauna. And that makes a big difference. In, in the Dolphin Club, they're they're a lot more straight, does it, Quinn? <laughs> not true, Antonio. Not true. <laughs> Where, where's Suzanne? She can she can help me out. Suzanne Heim is another uh, uh, very accomplished person. Yeah, it depends, Antonio. It depends. <laughs> Well, you, you dolphins have to invite me one day that I can see more action because, uh, you know, at the, at the times I was in the sauna at the dolphin club, nothing happened. So it was very boring. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the sauna. Oh, yeah. like, huh? uh, Quinn, I think we can fix that. We can. Okay. We can. Antonio, consider yourself invited. We'll take care of it. Okay. Next Likewise. Time. <laughs> for, for the audience that doesn't uh, know well or the details, uh, and differences between the Dolphin Club and the South End Rowing Club uh, on Aquatic Park in San Francisco Bay. Maybe Susan, can you explain the either subtle or major differences between the two clubs? Uh, I want to hear that. Club? I want to hear this. <laughs> Don't even go into that. <laughs> sure, I really want to go into that either. <laughs> um, well, I will say that. Um, you know, I've been a member of the Dolphin Club for ooh, 43 years. However, um, when I go to swim and, Anth and Antonia, that's where I met you, is at the South End. I do my Sunday morning. Um, I have a swim buddy over at the South End. And the South End on a Sunday morning at 630, there's probably 30 or 40 people that are taking off for a swim. Not now, obviously. But uh, and it's a little more subdued or quiet at the Dolphin Club. Right, Antonio? Um, but uh, some of the people in the South End, I, they, um, they do some pretty hardcore swimming. There's a group of them that really go out and um, they're not as fast, some of them, and they are spending upwards of, you know, their swims are 18 hours, long, long swims. Um, and then the Dolphin Club, we do, it seems like, and Quinn, you can correct me if I'm not on right, spot on on this, but they're a little bit more, um, I see a little more sp racing and speed because some of their events that they've got going are more um, event oriented and, and shorter distances, whereas the South End has uh, swims that are, they call them things like the nutcracker swims, um, kind of like they're longer swims in the South End. I mean, would you agree, Quinn? Yeah, I think I, I think that's right. I, I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think that's 100% true. It, it attracts, you know, more of the speed demon types and South End is, um, uh, you know, a social yeah. club with a swimming problem. Well, if I can say something to that, you know, I'm a th South Ender and I, I really don't like to say, oh, these are the dolphins, these are the South Enders. I think they are all very inviting. You can find fast swimmers, you can find slow swimmers, you can do social time. And um, it's just a beautiful way to share that beach and to do swimming. So come whenever you want. I mean, you are always welcome at the South. And I think the dolphins say the same. Mm -hmm. um, so really, um, this... Um, there are nuances. It, it, it's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there, there are big nuances that nobody has got into them. So I respect <laughs> the audience, and I but won't go the right into those. I won't go into those. But uh, when you visit, we'll give you a, a tour of the two different environments, and you'll you you can judge by yourself. And Connie, I think you're 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 spot on. It's it's a place to come swim. Beautiful venue. Um, 
I mean, I've gone, when I was doing my really long swims, my South End buddies would step up and would be crewing on my swims with the Dolphin Club. So, you know, it is, it, there are subtle differences, but it's all about swimming. Exactly. And as you said, you have a swim buddy. Um, you know, you meet people at the beach and you don't ask, are you South End? Are you no. a Dolphin? We just no. swim together. So let's just have fun there. Yeah. Antonio, uh, what about... What about this difference? What is the difference of swimming in Aquatic Park and La Jolla Cove? So La Jolla Cove in, in San Diego, uh, you know, about a six, seven hour drive up north in San Francisco Bay. What are those uh, subtle differences or major differences? Major difference. You know, what, the first thing is in La Jolla, you never encounter currents. I mean, when, when, when somebody tells you that there's a current in La Jolla is, a baby current. I mean, you can't even feel it. Um, the waves in La Jolla, you have to have a very, 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 very rare bad day to have waves in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in, in La Jolla. But just think about what, the first time I got to Aquatic Park, um, that's, how I, that's how I became friends with uh, Simon Dominguez. Because I was totally lost. You know, just if you go, you have to wait outside the door and the moment somebody opens the door, you have to rush in, pay your ten dollars because otherwise, you don't, if you don't have the card, you can't get in. So I was waiting there, and Simon sees me and said, "What are you doing here?" So well, I'm from Mexico, and so we go out and swim, and um, and, uh, and then she he introduced me to Kim, and the, it was a Sunday, and the first time we went swimming, Kim said, "Take it slow," and she we went inside, in aquatic park, and the moment we got out in the in the bay. It was a totally different swim. I mean, the waves, and it was that day we had a um, the, the 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 flow was going to to sample to the Golden Gate. So it's really nice going. It was we're going really fast outside the wall, and Kim tells me, "Don't go with the group. They're going to have a hard time getting back." And fortunately, we go in. But then when I went again by myself, when you get out, to, when you go to Fort Mason, which is when you're seeing Alcatraz in front of you. And you get the how, how you call it when the when the water is going out the um, ebb. It's, it's the ebb when, it's when ebbing, it goes yeah when out. It's ebbing and you're swimming against the ebb. That's very difficult. And if it has waves, you know, the, the, it's even worse. I mean, it's it's a totally different ball game. I mean, swimming in a outside aquatic park. Um, it's well, a, swimming in, in the San Francisco Bay, you can only do when you have looked at the tide book. You cannot swim outside without looking at the tide book. And I think uh, in, uh, in La Jolla, you don't have to look at the tide book. But if you don't do this and swim in San Francisco Bay, then you end up getting pushed out somewhere or you have to creep back against the current. Right, Susan? And that's a good training for any channel swim. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you, you know how I train, how I learned the, the, the book. I will go I out. Mean, you know how I I, I learn about the app and the, and and, and uh, you know. The different... I guess the hard way. I will I will go out and just lay it flat and see which way it was going. <laughs> so say, well, this is the, let's see how fast it is, how how hard it is, and then. Uh, <laughs> I'll Please go, don't go. do that. Please don't do that. Really, it can be dangerous. Okay. And then somebody has to come out and rescue you. Sometimes the currents are three to yeah. four knots and it's not Very fun. Good. Very good. <clears throat> so that's the difference. Yeah, got it. Got it. Um, and then we have one more question and it, it comes from Susan actually and says uh, on recovery. And I don't know if Sally has this problem because I don't know how warm the water gets in uh, Jersey where she lives, but is there any difference in recovering from a, a hard workout or a hard swim in warm water versus a uh, hard swim or long swim in colder water? And Antonio, you, you're, you're swimming in Acapulco, which is 30 degrees Celsius. And you're also swimming in Aquatic Park, which is, you know, uh, 12 degrees Celsius. So what are those differences in recovery? Swimming in cold water gets you more tired. Yeah. Very much, very much. I mean, it's... Uh, you sleep, very, you yeah, sleep it, very well after cold water swimming. Yeah, <laughs> it, it takes a lot. It takes a, a lot of more energy. Yeah. Uh, when you swim in warm water, you just have to keep, keep yourself hydrated. I yeah. mean, that's, uh, that's basically the difference. But 
but also in cold water, you have to get hydrated and, and well fed. But the the the, the level of, of tiredness that you get after swimming, you know, when I go the first days, and I go into cold swimming, cold water swimming, I feel very tired. I mean, it's uh, it's makes uh, me very sleepy. Yeah, it's it's very very it consumes a lot of you. Yeah, yeah. Our, our our sea temperature now has just gone under ten, so it's nine something at the moment. I can do 15 minutes easy, no problem. I'm going to try and build that up to 20, but uh, I have to be very careful, make sure I'm not, you know, putting myself in danger. But our sea temperature in August gets up to 19, 20, and that's kind of the tops, really. So it doesn't get hot. Yeah. It's just nice, very comfortable. Yeah. And we have um, another question from Sabrina, who she booked a North Channel relay for 2022. And she asked for any suggestions, advice. Um, I don't know if we have uh, many relay swimmers on here. You know, we don't have we don't have uh, um, uh, Mark with us today, Mark Hamilton. But my experience in North Channel is try to get there earlier. Give yourself ten days to swim. Yeah. To swim, it, that's that's going to be a cold water, even if it's a relay. You're gonna be going in and out, and uh, and uh, and it's it's uh, be prepared for cold water and be prepared for for hard currents. I mean that entry into into um, Scotland, it's uh, it's uh, it's very complicated. I mean, every, you know, all the all the channels have uh, complicated areas, but that one is you know the, the people who you know the moment the the, the tide changes, you know, you, we can take you. It can be 500, 600 meters from the coast and you won't be able to make it. Um, one thing I recommend, it's very important, you pay a visit to Pier 36. They yes. have a great selection of single malts and their sticky toffee pudding is just marvelous. And, uh, and so, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's a great yeah, place. That's a great is. place. Yeah. And the Guinness, the Guinness is wonderful too. I, I don't like Guinness, but the single malt was very good, Sally. I had a great time there. It is. I had that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Well, we're going to end by um, I'm going to ask Quinn. I think uh, you will announce the World Open Water Swimming Offering of the Year nominees later today, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we are crossing our I's and dotting our T's and we'll be ready to unveil uh, over 20 nominees for the offering of the year. And uh, over the course of the next week, we will uh, also unveil <clears throat> the performance of the year, man of the year, and woman of the year. So be ready to go vote. Thank you. Thank you. And th this year was a very unusual year, obviously. Yes. But I saw a lot of creativity throughout the entire um, global open water swimming community. A lot of people had time uh, to think, to write, to create to film, to edit. And so uh, looking forward to uh, seeing these nominees and, and the rest of the uh, nominees for all the other awards. I so Antonio, what do we have next for uh, next week? Any, any long workouts? You know what? Rafa is in Uruguay. Oh. He's from, he's from Montevideo. So he, he, hasn't, he hasn't written me. You know, I'm, I'm, okay. tomorrow is Sunday. You know, I usually on Sundays I get my my uh, my um, my workout, but I imagine that uh, we'll be doing either two or three hours next week, and uh, I don't know if we're going to go to Las Estacas or we're going to go to to in the pool, but um, we're going to start. Um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> I have to I have to switch. I have to switch that I have to get into moving mode again. But uh, I have a I have a question that I can I cannot. Uh, leave the, 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 the audience with this, uh, you know, with this uncertainty. Our voting process is going to be contested or we're going to be fine with our voting. <laughs> recount, a lot of recounts. <laughs> no, re so we, we, we won't have any recounts, okay? <laughs> Quinn's in charge of the electoral call. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we are, I mean, to answer you seriously, we, we're, we are using a plugin that has security so that people are only able to vote 
once per category, and it's based on both the IP address and the email address. So, uh, so it is it is very secure, and we we actually take it pretty seriously. We want to make sure. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been like it's, that for a couple of years, hasn't it? It's good. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's also just unique and fun that we we run this as a open, democratic, transparent process. Um, and you know, we let people lobby and promote themselves. And uh, it's really neat to see you know, whole nationalities um, kind of get behind an, a nominee and generate a lot of excitement. So, um, so be on the lookout. It is Wowza Awards season. Right. Right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you everybody who participated by questions and by answers. And we'll uh, see you all next week. Thank you. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.